Okay, first lesson learned, they only take cash here, but I did get a free pickle. And that's a really good pickle. In today's episode, not only are we getting free pickles in the largest market in Europe, we are also going over my top transportation tips for Riga, from what taxis will scam you to where you should be staying to avoid taking excessive cabs, we are going over all of it. Also stay tuned for a survival guide on early flights out of the Riga airport. Be sure to like and subscribe to the Fruit Salad Social YouTube channel for more travel content. First up, let's talk about Riga Central Market, aka the largest market in Europe. To those unfamiliar with European-style markets, essentially it's a central place for vendors to sell goods and usually it has both an indoor and outdoor section. Goods sold here range from delightful locally grown produce and delicacies oh, to knickknacks, trinkets, and even some fake Gucci. The Riga Central Market is 778,000 square feet with over 3,000 trade stands. It's even marked as part of the UNESCO World Heritage Site that includes Old Town Riga. The market was established in 1922 when the Riga City Council wanted to move an outdoor market along the bank of the Daugava River indoors to meet sanitation requirements. An international planning competition was held to determine the location of the new market and Latvian architects won after suggesting the city reuse existing German Zeppelin hangers left over from World War I. Yeah, so these used to be Zeppelin hangers. That's why it's Europe's largest market is it's in Zeppelin hangers. I'm on the hunt for the Soviet era trinket that my SO requested. We'll see if I find that. The market is a wonderful place to experience Latvian cuisine. I tried out some delicious soup in a handheld bread cup. Okay, I got fish soup in a edible bread bowl. Let's see how this goes. It could be the worst decision I've made yet. <laughs> but... Oh, it's tasty. It's like a biscuit. It's tasty. It was only three euro too. This food hall is super good. I did not find the Soviet era trinket that my boyfriend asked for. I don't think I'm finding that. <laughs> I looked. I got some good soup. And was given a free pickle after a vendor explained that it was a cash only market. Don't repeat my mistake. Pull out some euros at one of the ATMs. Luckily, the vendor was very nice and told this foolish American to enjoy this pickle as a gift from Latvia. One quick safety note on the central market, do be aware of pickpocketing here. It's crowded and a perfect place for a quick slip of something out of a pocket. The city of Riga is making efforts to lessen pickpocketing specifically in this market. Especially since you have to carry cash here, be aware of this. I did not have any problems with this, but there are warnings about it on official Latvian tourism sites. I suggest just carrying a crossbody bag in front of you to avoid this. It's a pretty surefire way to avoid pickpocketing anywhere. Overall though, the Riga Central Market is a great place to experience Latvian cuisine and potentially find some interesting souvenirs. After that, I got a lingonberry and apple pie to take back to my hotel and head it out. I got my uh, lingonberry apple cinnamon pie to motivate me to get back to my <laughs> hotel. Now let's get into some transportation tips, starting with heading to the market while you're in Old Town because it's very close and you can avoid cab rides. I was staying on the other side of the Daugava River from Old Town and the market. I had walked back to my hotel after exploring Old Town, mostly because I got absolutely soaked by the rain, but honestly I should have just walked over to the market because it was so close to Old Town. Now I also recommend that visitors stay within Old Town to avoid this. There are cheaper options to stay on the other side of the river and you do get amazing views from the hotels on the opposite side, but the convenience of a hotel in Old Town outweighs this. I ended up having to walk over 2.5 five miles from the market back to my hotel because at this point in my trip I didn't know about Bolt. 
aka the Uber or Lyft of the Baltic. I had been relying on taxis called by my hotel front desk, but had no way of getting a cab back after visiting my destination. If you come to the Baltic or Scandinavia, get the Bolt app and make transportation much simpler. Bolts also show up much quicker than taxis. When leaving from your hotel to the airport, definitely order a Bolt. I had a cab show up 30 minutes late when trying to leave for the airport. I used Bolt multiple times throughout the trip and it was so much quicker and safe. Now, if you do need to take a cab, which could happen when traveling from the airport to your hotel, be sure to get in the green Baltic taxi. They are literally lime green and you cannot miss them. These taxis are usually a third the price of the others and will not scam you. Other companies will run up meters or charge extra fees. Trust me, just take the green cab. Also, when you're at the airport, get in the cabs that are right in front of the passenger pickup. I had a driver try to lead me across the road to what looked like not an official cab. Be safe and get in the green cab right in front of the arrival section at the airport. Since we're on the topic of the airport now, boy do I have a story for you. Once I was done in Latvia, I planned to take a quick flight to meet my mother in Sweden very early in the morning. After a bit of a fiasco trying to get a cab, I finally made it to the airport around 5.30 for a 7 a.m. flight. I walk in the door and am greeted by a 300 person long line to check into my Air Baltic flight, but it wasn't really a line, it was more of a mob. I had no idea what was happening and also noticed that there were no agents at the check-in desk. No one was moving, but people were pushing. I asked the airport employees, where do I go? And they just said, yes, that mob is where you need to go. Essentially, what this ended up being was the Riga airport does not work around the clock like most other international airports. Agents for the airlines do not show up until at least 6 a.m. For 30 minutes, I stood in that mob thinking, I am never getting out of Latvia, am I? Then, thankfully, everything made sense when a small army of Air Baltic agents showed up on the dot at 6 a.m. to check in hundreds of people all leaving in less than an hour. I was shocked how fast they flew through the line, but it was still cutting it close to make my flight. I paid essentially for a fast pass through security. I think it was around 15 US dollars. I just casually walked through a very relaxed part of security and ended up having enough time to grab a coffee and a pastry before my flight. If I'd gone through the main part of security, it would have been cutting it a lot closer. The line for security was pretty long. This only happens with super early morning flights out of Riga and it can be avoided by booking a later flight or just watching this vlog and being warned that yes, you need to get in that mob. And yes, somehow a small army of Air Baltic agents will get you checked in quickly once it's 6 a.m. If you have a flight leaving before 6 a.m. or whenever the agents show up, they will have a specific line for people that need to check in early. There was an extremely early flight leaving to Egypt that had over 100 people being checked in in a separate mob from the main mob. Overall, I would just suggest booking a later flight out of the Riga airport. You can avoid all of this mayhem by doing that. And with this episode, we are done with our Latvian adventures and moving on to Sweden next. I hear there's fika to be enjoyed there. Be sure to like and subscribe to the Fruit Salad Social YouTube channel for more travel content.